been a long time coming. You know what I'm saying? I'm just sitting here thinking in my head about a lot of stuff, man. You know, stuff is going through my head. It's been many, many nights like this for me. What's different? What's different is right now, I'm free. I can actually say I'm free. But I often think to myself, am I free? Physically, I'm free. But mentally, sometimes I still feel incarcerated. Do that make sense? It probably don't, you know. To a lot of y'all, a lot of y'all don't understand, but I understand. You know, uh, it's a lot to my story. And I always say and tell people, I could tell my story a thousand times in a thousand different ways. And that's real. So, uh, you know, my story get told, my story get told by everybody (laughs) but me. I never really told my story. And I probably won't even tell my story now. You know, for the past five years, I've been held against my will. I've been held unlawfully. And I know, like, a lot of people might say that everybody say they've been held against their will. But I'm telling you, like, this is real. I mean, you know, I started out with catching a case. Felon in possession of a firearm. I was good for it. I took that charge, man. And uh, I walked out the federal courtroom with seven and a quarter. Seven years, three months, 87 months in federal terms. And I had a backup for the state. Now, to rewind this on. In the year 2006, I was 22 years old, and I caught a murder charge. Why'd I catch a murder charge? (laughs) Again, everybody could tell my story the way they want to tell it. (laughs) All right, I was minding my own business, you know, pulled up at the store. Go get me something to drink. Like a long story short, you know, this character, you know, uh, he saved me. He tried to run me over, man, with a truck, right? I'm like a buck 30, buck 28 this time. I walk in front of the nigga truck and uh, (laughs) nigga tried to run me over, man. It was just uh, unbelievable. So I jump back, I move out the way, nigga come at me again. So at this point, bow. That's how I see it. Like, I'm not running from no nigga. Nobody. I run from the pigs. That's it. I shot him. Killed him. Ran back to my car. At the time, man, dude. Dude sitting in the truck with his baby mama, his four-year-old son, four-year-old son. So, uh, nigga crashed into the wall and shit. Nigga was still moving when I left, you know what I mean? Later on, I found out the nigga dead, man. So now I'm on the run for murder. So, he got his baby mama. She tell the police that uh, I just pulled up, walked up, shot the nigga for no reason. We both know that ain't what happened. Could I be mad at her? Nah. She did what she was supposed to do. Take up for her nigga, you know? So, you know, I'm running seven months. 
We'll go into that another day, though. Fast forward. I go to trial. I get acquitted of the murder, right? But I get convicted of voluntary manslaughter, right? So the judge come with all this bullshit about, uh, even though the physical evidence was matching everything I said, you know, the judge came with some shit like he feel like I didn't do everything in my power to avoid the situation. You know, under Missouri law, is four elements of self-defense. You got to follow all four before you can get off with self-defense. And uh, number one is you can't be the aggressor. Clearly, I wasn't the aggressor. The nigga came at me. Uh, number two, I want to say um, you have to feel like that you in serious danger of bodily harm or death. Clearly, I felt like that. The nigga coming at me with an F-150 truck, man. I'm, I'm 128 fucking pounds. You know, so... Number three is you have to do everything in your power to get away and avoid the situation. I did that. I jumped the fuck out the way the first time. Nigga came at me again. So clearly I did that too. And the fourth one is you can't use more force than necessary. I followed that one too. I could have overkilled that nigga, <laughs> but I didn't. Shot that nigga. Dipped off. I could have shot his baby mama if I wanted to. The kid if I wanted to. Damn my style though. Oh shit, innocent blood, man. So I followed all four elements of self defense, but I feel like the judge, I feel like it was all political, you know? And uh I feel like that he convicted me of manslaughter just, you know, to just kind of make it uh, equal on both sides. This was a political thing, man. My my case was very high profile, you know, at the time. And uh, he gave me a 10-year suspended sentence for the voluntary manslaughter. Mind you, manslaughter carries 5 to 15. Um... It's my first time down. I've never had a, a charge before, right? No felony. I should get the minimum, right? At least, like, you know, somewhere between five and seven. Man, that nigga gave me a 10 year sentence, but he suspended it. You know, I get the three years for the ACA, so I ran together. So the 10 year suspended sentence put me on five years probation. So I'm not going down, but. I had to give him that time for the armed criminal action because that don't carry that don't carry any type of probation. So I had to give him that three years flat, which I had about two years in already in the county. So I had to go touch prison grounds to do that 14 months. And uh, I did my 14 months. You know, the town was hyped, though. Everybody hyped, like, Tay beat that murder. Tay beat that murder. I did be the murder, but I didn't feel like I won. I should have walked out the fucking courtroom. You know what I mean? I mean, it was me or him. Either he was going to kill me or I was going to kill him. One of us was going to be on trial for murder, you know? So uh, that was that. Maxed out on my ACA. I'm back on the streets, but I'm on this probation. I'm not on parole. I'm on probation, right? Now... It's the difference between SES probation and SIS probation. And, you know, SIS probation is like suspended imposition of sentence or some shit like that, basically meaning if you violate, you can, and the judge can give you anything within that sentencing frame, right? For instance, if I violate, he can give me anywhere between 5 and 15, right? But the SES, uh, which he gave me, means um, you give me an actual sentence, which was 10 years. And if I come back, violate, you can just execute that sentence, period. Can't give me nothing less, can't give me nothing more, right? So I'm on the streets, man. And uh, <sighs> I had a bitch for a PO, man. When I say a bitch, man, she was a bitch, right? Man, the bitch made me report once a week. This bitch made me drop once a week. This bitch just totally harassed me, right? But 
It ain't shit. I'm in the streets, man. Doing my thing. I ain't really t- fucking with too many people, but you know I'm fucking with, you know, who I fuck with, right? I ain't trusting nobody, but, you know, I'm kind of still trusting motherfuckers. Like, uh, uh, you know how that shit go. We live and we learn, right? I'm on the street five months, man. And uh, one day, riding with one of my little hoes. I know nobody too important. Lousy bitch. Just, you know, convenient asshole, right? I pull up. Uh, on the east side. Just to holler at the homies. Ain't, you know, ain't nothing too major and shit. Well, apparently the feds had the east side under surveillance at the time. And everybody know how the feds do. They just sit back and watch you. Just build a case. Even if they watch you for five more fucking years, man. However they want to do. They wanted my homeboy, right? They wanted Neff, man. And uh, he... uh. He was always beating them, always beating cases. So they felt like it's time to get this nigga. So they really was just building a case on my nigga, right? So they watching the east side, doing what they do. And I pull up over there. Now, this federal agent, he see me. So he thinking, wow, that's Shantae. They're mine. <laughs> we know she got a gun on her. I ain't doing nothing wrong, mind you. I ain't doing shit wrong, man. I'm just with this hoe, sitting there talking to these niggas, right? Sitting there for probably about 20, 30 minutes and shit. Now, in the process of this, I'm not knowing this at the time. You know, the federal agents are not going to stop doing what they doing. So they alert KCPD, right? Tell them, like, you know, come, come get whatever the fuck they called them to say. They alerted their ass to come, right? But in the midst of this, I leave before the KCPD get there. So me and this hoe, we uh, we headed to Walmart uh, out there on a uh, Forty Highway or something, eastbound. Now, at the time, you know they trying to still catch up with me. Now I get, I remember, I never forget, I'm getting off on this exit and uh. To the Walmart, I see this white truck coming up on me real motherfucking fast. Now, anytime, if I'm not driving, because we in this bitch car, right? So if I'm not driving, yes, it's any time. I'm in the passenger seat. I let the, the mirror down, right? So I can still see behind me. And I see this motherfucker coming up on me so fast. I'm going to tell you exactly what I did. I did just like in the mirror, right? Now, I know the truck seen me do that, and the truck probably thinking, like, damn, you know, she spotted me. So the nigga played it off, bam. He get off like he going left, and I look. It's a big-ass, stupid-ass F-150, right? It's like a black dude in that motherfucker by itself. He looked like a young college dude, though, right? He played it off, bam. He turned off and just go down the street. I ain't think shit of it. We go to the Walmart, man. We in the Walmart, you know, I go shoot my nigga some money. Uh, my nigga in the joint, right? He wanted some money and shit. We stay in Walmart probably like 15, 20 minutes. And uh, so we leaving out. Like, the bitch on the phone, she handed me the phone. I want to say she was talking to my cousin or something. Now, at the time we in this Walmart, of course, you know, the pig D, they done caught up. So they got a chance to set up and shit outside. I'm, I'm totally unaware of this shit, though. Mind you, I ain't did shit, though, man. You know, I ain't did nothing. Keep that in mind, right? So, she get, I'm on the phone. Like, she had heard my cousin talking. Bitch, give me the phone. And, uh, like, talking to my cousin. But at this time, we walking out the Walmart. So, you know me, you know, I, I got enemies. So, I'm like, hey, here, get the phone back. Get the bitch the phone back and shit, right? If you could see this video that they got, this surveillance video, you could see, if you could see me walking out this Walmart, you knew that I felt how I was thinking, it's like when I walk out, I just felt like somebody was watching me, but never in my head am I thinking police, you know, like, so I'm just, you will see I looked around, looking around, you know, just watching my surroundings and shit, right, but you know, we we paranoid, we in these streets, we paranoid, that could just be just something coming over me, I don't know, 
We walk to the car. We get in. I'm finna go on house arrest that exact day, right? Call my PO. I get in the car, call my PO, like, hey, I'm on my way to the house, right? Took my heat off my hip. Laid that motherfucker in my lap. That's the first thing I did when I got in the car. Then I called my PO. Bam. As soon as I hang up the phone, it probably was like a 20-second call. The bitch like, baby, police behind us. Look in the mirror. It's like a blue detail car just with flashing lights. I'm like, bitch, go. You know what I'm saying? Bitch, take off. As soon as that bitch take off, psh, y'all remember that white truck? <laughs> that was getting off on me on the highway? That motherfucker came out of nowhere trying to cut us off. So she dodging, man. Like, next thing I know, it's just cars coming from every fucking where. I'm like, what the fuck? But they all unmarked regular ass cars just trying to just cut us off and take us out. So I'm like, what the fuck? But everything happening so fast. So the bitch kind of shaking the cars. And all I'm thinking is like, fuck, I wish I was behind this wheel. Because, I mean, the bitch know how to drive, man. But the bitch ain't used to that type of shit that we used to. You know what I'm saying? So... We dip out the Walmart parking lot. We, like, dip around the corner to the Lowe's parking lot and shit. By this time, I'm like, hey, let me out. I'm about to run. So she stopped. I jump out. I'm running towards the wall. A blue kick-in van coming around the corner behind us. As I'm jumping the wall, dude jump out the blue kick-in van. All I hear is, Shantae, stop. But at this time, it's not dawning on me. Like, how the fuck do this nigga know who the fuck he chasing, right? I just hit the wall, right? Now, at this time, I ain't knowing this wall was 15 fucking feet high, bro. <laughs> I jumped over a 15 fucking foot high wall, fast adrenaline. When I hit the ground, I didn't fall. I kind of stumbled a little bit. And I started running across the street. So I try to I take the gun off. I try to throw it in the sewer because it's a sewer right there. But motherfucker ain't making it in the sewer. I ain't got time. This I'm I'm running. I'm gone. This time I know I got to get away. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm running through backyards and shit. I'm just jumping fences, jumping fences. You know what I'm saying? You got this pussy ass pig on me. He on my heels. He chasing me. Steady yelling, bitch, stop. So as I start going through these backyards, he start threatening to shoot me. I'm gonna shoot you, bitch. I'm gonna shoot you, bitch. I stop. He he had kind of kneel down and take aim. He chasing me with a big ass AR. And every time he take aim, I just dunk, duck over another fence. He got to start chasing me again. I did this about four times over about four, five fences. This pussy was really trying to shoot and kill me, man, like real shit, right? So I'm hearing all these sirens. I'm hearing everything, breaks and shit, scratching. You know, they on radios and shit. So by the time I got through this one fence, another pig come out the way. Bow, he closed on me out of nowhere. Throw me down, cuff me. Now, it, it rained the night before, so, like, the grass, the grass was wet. Now, I'm in, I'm in somebody's backyard, right? So, they cuffed me. I'm laying down. The other pig caught up with me. They start beating the fuck out of me in this backyard. I'm talking about kicking me, stumping me, literally standing on my face with a boot. The other pig was, bam, hitting me in the back of my head with the AR. Like, I'm talking about they fucking me up. And you know me, I'm in handcuffs. I can't even put my arm hands up in defense. So I'm just on the ground. Ah, fuck. Ah, ah. They just hit. Shut up, bitch. You black bitch. Shut up, bitch. That's how they doing me, right? Kick. I'm talking about fucking me up, right? All right, so they get done with that. They grab me. They stand me up. They get on the radio. Say I'm in custody. They like, all right, bitch. We're going to take you back to this car, you black bitch, and you're not going to say nothing. We're going to take you to the scene. You're not going to say nothing. But mind you, when I get apprehended, I just go silent. I'll say nothing, right? They take me to the car. Now they want to talk to me. So who's the girl you were with? I'm just I'm just quiet. I ain't saying shit, right? Take me back to this Walmart. And uh, I see they got the bitch, you know, like they got the bitch in cuffs uh, sitting in the car or something. So they got me sitting outside the paddy wagon. They wait on a female to come search me. And I'm just sitting there. I got these zip ties on me with these handcuffs. Because uh, KCPD know that my, my wrists, they, they small. So they always zip tie me when they handcuff me, right? So I'm just sitting there. All these fucking pigs are just so fucking happy. You got pig after pig pulling up. 
oh man, you got Shantae, who you, yo, really, you got Shantae, I'm just like, I'm looking at these crackers, right, and uh, the one that was trying to shoot me, and was doing, because both of the pigs was beating the shit out of me, but this pussy was fucking me up, especially in the back of my head with this gun, and he really was trying to kill me, man, like, and he was just talking the most shit, and the whole time out of everything going on around me was blocked out. I'm just staring at this pussy. Like, he, like, right across from me, like how I am right now from this camera. And I'm just staring at him. And I'm looking at his face. And all that's going through my head is, I'm not never, ever going to forget this pussy face. Because I'm knowing in my head, I'm gone. Right, they on radio. I was talking about they found the gun and all that. But of course they found it, right? Uh, they didn't find the clip. I want to say the clip did fly in the sewer, but the gun like kind of bounced off or whatever the fuck. But they ain't find the clip, right? So I, 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 I know I got a 10-year backup, but I know I'm finna go to the feds, right? But all I'm thinking is, I ain't gonna never, ever, ever forget this pig face, right? And he just smiling and this and that, you know. They got me on the scene and, uh, Eventually, you know, a female came and they took me, went downtown. And, uh, you know, went up under a 24 hour investigation. Um, my PO came the next morning, uh, took my ankle bracelet off of me, read me my, you know, violation report. And uh, after that, two U.S. Marshals came and picked me up the next day. Um, they were real professional. They wasn't like KCPD. They think about the feds. They more straightforward, straight up. You know what I mean? And uh, they keep it. They keep it a stack. Uh, they just pretty much just told me, you know, we finna take you over here. You know, we are gonna charge you with the gun, felon with being the gun. You know, blah blah. And that's what they told me. Call some people. Call your family. Come pick your property up. And uh, that was that. They took me to CCA, and you know, uh, which is, for those of y'all don't know, CCA is like the federal holdover. Man, like, I, I was limping, man. I was fucked up. I was limping for about uh, a month, maybe two. They fucked me up. But uh, it's a lot to that story, man, you know? thousand ways man a thousand different times that's how much I could tell my story <laughs>